Okay, everyone, my smartphone says that it's smarter than the clock on the wall. So I'll call the meeting to order for council meeting number 20, Tuesday, October 1, 2024. We recognize that we meet on the traditional territory of La Taco Dene. Um, looking for approval of the agenda, and I am re happy, very happy to report that we don't have any changes to our, our, our late items. So, so thank you to staff for that. So uh, a motion, Councillor Runge is moving and seconding by Councillor McKelvey to adopt the, uh, or approve the agenda. All in favor, opposed, carried. Now we're looking for a motion to adopt the minutes of the meeting, the last meeting held September 2-4, moved by second, or pardon me, moved by Councillor uh, Elliott, thank you, I, I saw a hand go up, and, and seconded by Councillor Vick. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. We have no presentations, no delegations, no items arising from previous special closed meetings, no unfinished business, no committee reports, no council reports and discussion items. However, we do have a couple of staff reports. So I'm going to now move to admin report 102-24, Municipal Finance Authority Equipment Financing uh, for 2025, Director Bolton. The floor is yours. Oh, sorry. Thank you. So the purpose of this report is to request a resolution from Council to approve the equipment financing through the Municipal Finance Authority for the equipment in the 2024 Capital Plan. So this was all part of the 2024 Capital Plan, just like we do every year. This is just the actual resolution that we need to do during the year to get the loan, but it was all approved in the plan. It's all in action. So right now, the MFA equipment financing rate is 4.96. It's glad finally coming down, which is nice with all interest rates, so that's great. And I listed all the types of equipment we're buying this year. Down at the bottom, again, it was all included in the capital plan. So the recommendation is that Council of the City of Quinnell authorizes up to 750000 be borrowed under Section 175 of the Community Charter from the Municipal Finance Authority for the purpose of purchasing mobile equipment in 2024, and that the loan be repaid within five years with no sites of renewal. Okay, thank you, Kerry. Uh, Councillor Rudenberg is you're moving. Councillor Vick is seconding. Any discussion? I'll call the question. All at, oh, Councillor Vick. Thanks. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, I just just a question for Director Bolton. For every half percent reduction in the MFA financing, what does that roughly translate to to savings in, in interest payments over the term of five years? For the equipment, that's a great question, and I can get back to you on that. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Any, any further questions before I call the question? Question is called. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, the next report is Admin Report 103-24, Official Community Plan Amendment, Amendments, plural, Director Turner to report. Thank you, Mayor. The purpose of this report is to obtain approval to proceed with a request for, for proposals for an update to the Official Com Community Plan, Zoning Bylaw, and Development Applications Procedures Bylaw. The province mandated review and updated the Official Community Plan to be completed by the end of 2025. Staff are requesting to concurrently review and update the Zoning Bylaw and Development Application Procedures Bylaw. There is n a need to issue a request as soon as possible uh, due to the antici anticipated demand for for consultants and uh, the, given that the reviews uh, for these are required in every municipality by the end of 2025 and we can already see a, a, a flux of them on, on BC bid. Um, again, uh, the reasons for uh, updating the zoning bylaw and development application procedures bylaw concurrently um, uh, include A, the development applications procedures bylaw is <laughs> significantly outdated. Um, uh, not so much in procedures because procedures really haven't changed since that time, but now they have. With the recent updates from the province, there is need to now uh, really do a good review of the application procedures bylaw and make sure that we're taking advantage of all the new legislation that has been passed. Additionally, uh, the zoning by updating the zoning bylaw at the same time, you have your land use policy up to date and ready to go for any kind of housing initiatives that we put in there, um, so that you're not having to then also amend the zoning bylaw if we decide, as we did last uh, last review, to look at uh, some some 
uh, properties and maybe amend zoning to encourage housing. So that's that's the reason for incorporating them at the same time. Um, additionally, we will achieve a number of other initiatives that we can flow right through the planning documents, including early and ongoing uh, uh, consultation with First Nations, development of accessible documents and updating of all related applications um, and information documents uh, to make the processes um, um, uh, more clear to the public, improvement of all development application and uh, uh, guidance documents, okay, again, as I said that, incorporation of master infrastructure plan into the official community plan. So we are doing the master, official, uh, master infrastructure plan right now. That information is gonna line up directly and beautifully with the update of these bylaws and incorporating uh, the recommendations out of that into where our new housing should go on developments and also incorporating the housing needs assessment, which is right in review right now. We're just getting some of the information. So the housing needs assessment and that final document can also roll right into those documents. So the recommendation is that, excuse me, that council direct staff to proceed with moving ahead, revisions of the official community plan, zoning bylaw and development application procedures bylaw concurrently. And as I stated, we have um, financing for about uh, 195,000 of that, 155,000 left from the province uh, with this, but we uh, are needing uh, probably some additional funding of $100,000. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, motion, Councillor uh, Rudenberg moving, seconding Councillor Runge. Is, I saw your hand. Do you have a question? Okay, you're seconding it and then you're asking a question. And, oh, C Carrie, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to note this, I should have caught it earlier, that we'd like to add the $100,000 comment to the recommendation, so it should be with $100,000 allocated from the 2025 budget within the resolution. Just good so that's good okay. catch, yeah. yeah, thank you. Okay, so everybody's okay with that? Okay, Councillor Runge, you've got a question or a yeah, comment? I, no, well, I think a question and possibly a comment, I don't know, it goes always with the money. Uh, so this question goes to, uh, I guess, to Director Turner. So uh, it has a multi, multi-pronged. So are we able to use in-house expertise for this or does it have to go out to bid? This would be much too large for our, our, our staff to do as well as do their normal jobs. Uh, all right, and then, then my second question is, that 100,000, uh, so you have 155,000 available right now, could that 100,000 meet with when we're discussing budgets? I, I, I guess I have a personal issue that we're moving into budget stuff prior to us doing the budget as a council, which now is going to affect the rest of our, our council budget process. So the question is, is it because that we have to get the, co the contractors in line right away that we need this right away? And then we might have to look at it and go, oh, it's gonna hurt somewhere else. But really, the, for me, I would have rather have seen this in the budget process. Okay, I'm gonna go to uh, uh, Director Turner for the answer. Thank you, Well, As you know, the legislation required to do a lot of these amendments came up after the past uh, budget uh, um, review, so some of this is, is new. Note, however, that um, uh, we are at a time right now when our OCP should be, um, um, by best practice standards, uh, reviewed anyway. So typically, our last our last revision was 132,000, is what we paid out of our own pocket for just the OCP and zoning bylaw. And that was with probably not as much, of, not as big of updates as we're expecting here with all these legislative amendments. Um, so um, the, hundred, the additional $100,000, I think we're still you know, gonna be uh, successful this year. And then if I might, my, my final question is, because given that a lot of this is still based on downloading of services from the provincial government, like this all is kind of pushed by the download, aren't, aren't all the changes due to uh, changes, mandated changes from the province? I wouldn't say these would be downloading type changes though. These are just policy changes for stuff we've always been responsible for. So this would, would be a different conversation. So I, I don't disagree question. with downloading, but I don't think it's in this case. All right, so I'll, I'll take back the downloading. I was just hoping that there was possibly some other money coming from the province that we could maybe harness from somewhere to help out with this, I guess is where I was getting to do. I think to that comment, they have given us $195,000 to do this, but the OCP has been something that's always been listed in our supplementals as an outer year. We know every five years or so we have to do it. It's one of those costs that the city has to incur. Thank you. Th uh, anything more, Councillor Runge? No, I didn't want to, I'm not Actually, no, you're not, out, you're not outnumbered because I certainly agree with your um, characterization of downloading, so. But we'll leave it at that. Uh, so um, we've had, we've had a, or we have a mover and seconder. I'm ready to call the question. There's no further comment or question. All in favor? 
Opposed? Carried. So that concludes our uh, staff reports. Uh, we have no nothing called forward for the council information package. We have no correspondence. We have no bylaws tonight, no new business. Uh, now I'm going to move to information and question period. No changes to upcoming meeting schedule. No changes to committee appointments, announcements, and or events. Anyone? Okay, seeing none, I'll open it up to um, uh, gallery questions. The excitement is palatable. So um, with that, I will call for a motion to adjourn. Moved, uh, Councillor McKelvey, seconded Councillor Vic. We stand adjourned, thank you. And we did it in a record 10 minutes, so thank you. <laughs>